I have the next seven days to build the perfect medieval army with six different factions and over 250 minifigures. Meanwhile, Holly on Film and Firebird Bricks will be creating their own armies to compete against mine where we'll come together halfway through the week for a mystery building challenge. So with only three days to get ready. Today I want to focus on some smaller factions that I can quickly put together. For the second day I'm going to have some medium sized armies and on the third day I'll have my largest army. This way I'll have multiple options for a ton of different builds, like maybe a conflict between rivaling kingdoms or a populated market. Whatever it is, I want to be ready. And with that said, I need to round up my first army. These guys are LEGO's version of Robin Hood and his band of merry men, and mine are 16 strong, consisting of 9 archers and 7 warriors. 10 of the figures are built off the newest torsos. Two are classic figs from the 1980s, with the rest being made up of random parts, like this captain that has a torso of Robin Hood and a hat of a German Lederhosen guy. And the least fitting figure here is actually from an unofficial official build a minifigure forestman. The final figure is an elf who leads the group to deter anyone from going through the forest. Even though this isn't the smallest faction I have, it's probably one of the weaker ones, only getting weapons from what they can make or steal. It's it's not really my favorite faction, which can't be said about the Crown Knights. These minifigures have parts from some of the first castle sets I ever had, and even though it's not going to be that big, I'm pretty excited this video is giving me an excuse to make a proper regiment out of these guys. And right off the bat, I can double my troops by taking the breastplate armor and putting it over another generic torso. This is something I'll definitely be doing a lot to bulk up my numbers, and if you think it doesn't count, it's not a castle minifigure or I'm cheating, I do have a very good rebuttal. I don't care. I also picked up a few here and there that aren't for my childhood that slot right in. This gold knight, creatively named, Gold Knight is missing some of his pieces. But given the absolutely absurd price of a replacement at $100 for one minifigure, I'll make do with what I have. Same with this random assortment of pieces that either look like or are an offshoot of the Crown Knights, giving me three more. My army would stop here, but the fantasy era castle sets that these are from allow me to have just a little bit more fun. These sets are labeled fantasy because they had otherworldly creatures like trolls or undead, dragons, and the most weird one of them all small people. Dwarfs allied themselves with the human crown knights, and I need no more excuse to pad out my troops with some more figures from my childhood. Only three of my five original dwarfs are still around. The last two have been lost to time, with only a beard remaining. So I'll build some custom dwarves, and because I'm now including a dwarf regiment, that means I can bring in their siege. I am, I'm really excited to do this. I have not built this set in like 15 years. I'm really looking forward to finding these parts and putting them back together. With the catapult and a few additional stragglers, in total I have 22 minifigures in the Crown Knight army ready for war. To keep with fantasy, the last and smallest of my armies is made up of centaurs. LEGO released the part in two colors, one for a Harry Potter set and the second time in a collectible minifigure series. I tried to match the color of the hair with the horse tails like with the battle manes, or with the fur like with this villager. Most of them have a cloth pauldron to help blur the line between human body top and horse bottom. The war chief leads them into battle while the elder that I made using a centaur body from trolls, then she didn't know that was a thing, is more of the villager and spiritual leader. Besides the obvious, this one's pretty different, using the watcher from Marvel's collar for his skirt and a plume from Monkey Kid to match his gray top. I probably won't end up using these, especially since I don't like mixing flesh tone with yellow, but I'm really happy how they turned out. On today's docket, there are two clashing factions that I've had for quite a while and I want to finally do something with, the Lion and Dragon Knights. I've had this chess set since 2012, and with 28 figures, for 50 bucks, it both started and made an army. And now I want to upgrade and combine them with other related groups to continue getting the fullest out of this set by continuing to never play chess with it. The lines have always had a more fancy and proper feel, so I want to make them look well armed and armored with bright and shiny equipment. To have more consistency between all the different eras of Lion Knights that I have, I took most of them apart and started randomly putting them all back together. It's a bit of a weird feeling taking apart these figures. Unlike plenty of other minifigures that I have that are all in pieces, I have consciously kept these ones together for 12 years, but being overly sentimental about uh, nothing is kind of dumb, so onwards to a bigger and better army. I'm giving figures with a flared helmet a scarf to give them a bit more of a robust look. Knights with heavier armor are receiving heavier helmets with some red parts from Knight's Kingdom. The theme that had wanking knights for those that don't remember also got mixed in there. The two jester archers are staying as marksmen in the king's court, but with red bolts for the crossbows and masks from a gypsy set. Reused video horse heads that showed up on the BAM tower last year, I'm treating like over the top helmets and not real horse people heads. What? Having some reverse centaurs would be an interesting development. Finally, there's a royal family with a king, queen, two children, and an uncle made from an old conquistador torso, all protected by royal guard using extra Harry Potter minifigures, with a total of 50 lions. The lion knights are definitely at an advantage, with that castle alone giving another 10 minifigures, but I have a few ideas to bulk up the dragons. The faction I plan on going over tomorrow, my Black Falcons, is one I've spent a ton of time on and prioritized pretty heavily, 
and I don't have a ton of castle parts left over. These Dragonites also have a reputation of being more thuggish, less refined, with crude faces and fortresses with a corrupt wizard as its leadership. I'm gonna try to use their rugged design and my dwindling parts into my favor by making a cobbled together group of more like bandits than an actual kingdom. Doing this does give me a little bit more wiggle room and using stuff like these extra Ninjago torsos. Random shields, helmets, weapons, and less than ideal armor that don't look super visually appealing work together under this narrative. Kinda. I have a few of these to seal some Dragonite figures from, but they come with a bit of a dilemma. To keep the army somewhat consistent, I swap the colors of the minifigures that aren't normally green, but I'm not sure if I like the change. I'm gonna leave these seven blue for now, but I'd like your opinion on whether or not I should change them to green or change the ones I've already changed back to their original colors. I'm not sure. I'm not feeling solid about either choice. After some additional upgrades and way too many banners, I have 38 troopers, a bit smaller than the Lion Kingdom, but with a mage, that kind of balances it out. Day three, the big army day, and that big army is my Black Falcon uh, army. How many times have I said army in this video? I've already spent way, way, way too much time working on these things. I've spent the past few year working on these, and instead of me trying to build up something, I'm just gonna go through and show all the different units that I've come up with. This army almost looks like an actual army, unlike everything else I've done so far, and it splits into three groups. The Blue Falcons, Red Falcons, and an auxiliary force. The Blue Falcons are the main segment under the direct leadership of a Black Falcon Lord wearing an original torso. He's joined by his advisor plus four gold clad guards. After this, the troops break down into a further three groups, cavalry, archers, and foot soldiers, each one being led by a blue helmed officer. The blue slash black banner signifies soldiers on horseback. All eight men are equipped with a lance and a sword while also having additional neck armor that's just a backwards bow tie. Under blue and violet are ten archers using the falconer bodies from the collectible minifigure series. The largest group are proper knights. With that status comes more freedom in armor and weapons choice. Among the 25 knights, one sticks out. The Black Knight. My modern version of a nothing character from a TV commercial using a classic shield and torso. I made him a bit older given that the commercial came out a handful of decades ago. On to the Red Falcons. A figure that was only available at the BAM Tower makes up the bulk of my force. To explain the color clash between between the Red and Blue Falcons, the leader and subsequently his army are bannermen to the main Black Falcon Lord. And no, I didn't steal this from a recent rewatch of Game of Thrones. Thus, to distinguish himself, lands and forces apart, dark red is the main color of choice. In the old Red Falcon's ranks are five lance cavalry, 24 spearmen, 16 men in arms, half of which lead in the vanguard under this monster of a minifigure. And to make him extra tall, I used a number of additional pieces like a belt and metal to extend his features. The head barely sticks on because of this, but oh well. And before you ask, no, I did not also steal this idea from a recent rewatch of Game of Thrones copying the mountain. Lastly are these guys the only group I didn't put that much thought into. The helmets they're wearing are ones I only ever use for archers, and the oversized hailbirds that require at least three hands to use while being paired with an overly large shield all culminate in making not any sense. But the rule of cool always outweighs practicality and realism, and this definitely looks cool. Uh, I mean, as cool as toys being played with by an adult can be, so not at all. The auxiliary unit is by far the most diverse, with six wholly unique classes. There's artillery, responsible for operating and maintaining the trebuchets. Provisioners, lightly armored troops, tasked with moving all supplies needed for battle. Messengers, delivering commands by horse and falcon. Scouts, to blaze the trail for the rest of the army. A field mage, tasked to defend against other magic and heal wounded. And regional defensive units, protecting a nearby castle on enemy borders. Altogether, there are 145 figures right here, for a grand total of 278 mini figures this far in the video. The falcons have called on the full strength of its kingdom and picked up any additional troops along the way to war with one or all the opposing armies here. Or at least that's what I'd like to do tomorrow when we start our build challenge. That's saying the rules don't horrendously bend me over tomorrow. So I just got horrendously bent over. I just got off of a phone call with Firebird Bricks and Holly on Film to decide what our build challenge should be, but the rules make it a bit more... Interesting. You know how I just spent the last three days scrounging together nearly 300 minifigures? You wanna know how many minifigures I'm allowed to use? Take a wild guess. Is your guess 32? Because that wasn't gonna be mine! We have the remaining four days to build a scene to display our armies with three requirements. One, we can only use 32 minifigures. Two, it must fit onto a single base plate. And three, we have to have a reference to one another. So my efforts of putting all of this together doesn't go entirely wasted. I think I have an idea to build something to make this work. The first rule of the minifigure cap is really not an issue. Because I made essentially seven different armies, I have plenty of options, and almost all of them are big enough to be their own display by themselves. I'm just a little bit upset I can't use more of them, but 
Oh well. This is a 32 by 32 base plate. Even though it's a really big piece, once I put terrain and some sort of castle build on it, there will be hardly any room left for any minifigures at all. But if I split it up, I'll have a lot more freedom to do something more than just a big block. So that the display looks good and the figures have plenty of breathing room, I'm only gonna do a small section of the castle, maybe a portion of a wall or a gatehouse, a tower, nothing major, and have the figures laying siege to the castle or maybe marching away from it. I'll, I'll definitely need to figure this out tomorrow. <laughs> I give it some thought and splitting up the base plates to have a more interesting layout will go a long way in my display. I've also decided to feature the Crown Knights and make some sort of dwarf mine entrance to a great fortress. Maybe on the outside have a marketplace and that's where I can have the reference to both Holly and Caleb. I'm trying to make the mock look a little more natural with different wedge and curve pieces, building up the rock work. This is giving me less space to use, but hopefully it'll help my build stick out a little bit more. Okay, so it's been a large number of hours since my last update, and I'm roughly halfway through my mock. Being in a mountain, steps are steep with a natural landscape making any attack difficult. I started on this bridge to span the gap between the two main sections, and a watchtower for further defense. How am I gonna fit 32 minifigures on here? Well, I'm not. At all. So, maybe this was a bad idea. With only one day left, I not only have to finish my mock, but also finish filming and editing this video, so what I'm about to say is gonna sound really stupid. Last night I got way too lost in the sauce of building, making something that, one, doesn't look very good, or good at all, and two, can hardly fit any minifigures. And there is no way it would look better with an additional 14 figs. Because the goal is to make a scene for minifigures, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start a brand new mock from scratch. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. Words to live by. So instead of having some ugly overbuilt terrain, I now have this pretty sizable trail to fit a large combination of troops. Over here is gonna be a relatively small wall segment with a different faction staring down the soon to be invaders. Now there's an obviously clear border that's admittedly much less creative, but looks much more clean. The castle isn't huge by any measure, but it conveys that there's more beyond it. And because it has an incredibly sharp angle for Lego standards, it's not connected to anything. This took way too much time to do and an embarrassing amount of stress, but it, it's, it's practically done. Practically, practically. I just need to get up tomorrow and add the minifigures and hope that whatever Caleb and Holly did is somehow worse than this. It probably won't be. Okay, time to make everything look pretty and pray that none of this fragile crap falls apart as I apply the minifigures. The castle wall is manned by a small group of crowd knights waiting for the enemy to attack at any second. On the ground is some supplies and a messenger about to ride out to request reinforcements from Holly's Lion Knight army. Across the river sits the majority of my minifigures on standby for the order to strike. Unbeknownst to any of the Falcons, a Dragon Knight scout from Firebird's army spies on the events about to take place. The base is 32 by 32 studs, there are somehow 32 minifigures crammed in here, and a reference to both Firebird and Holly on film. It might not look at but this whole thing putting together six armies 278 minifigures and building a display to put some of them on and getting this video together was much less straightforward than I initially thought it would be. Caleb and Holly both took on this week-long challenge and experienced it in entirely different ways so go watch their videos and comment letting us know who you thought had the better castles or armies. It, it probably wasn't me but if you think it was me you should subscribe so I know and if you don't think it was me then you should also subscribe so I know.